we're again traveling Royal Route 66, and the book we come to today is the book of Esther. Now, the fascinating thing about the book of Esther, it's in the Bible, but the name of God is not mentioned in the entire book. You and I would look at that and say, well, how is this in the Bible if, it's, if the name of God is not mentioned? In some ways, you could take a Shakespearean play and parallel it to the book of Esther and have the divine dramas that are spelled out uh, parallel to this book and you would begin to discover some of the ways that Shakespeare uh, understood the struggles between good and evil uh, in his day as well. But this is an underlying statement of the human condition. In Esther, you have one of the struggles that becomes clear later in human history about hatred toward the Jews. There was a man named Haman who wanted to rise in the service of the king and Esther becomes the, the uh, plot that keeps him from doing that as he struggles with a Jewish man named Mordecai. And this is the final book in the historical section of the Old Testament that uh, occurs uh, after the book of Genesis and allows us to begin to see some of the events that occur around Babylon and around the other uh, kingdoms that struggle with Israel. And it reminds us of the jealousy that is described in Daniel 6, for instance, as a motivation for actions that ultimately cost the accuser uh, his life or their lives. When God moves in an unseen providence toward his people, there's always safety. It doesn't always seem like victory at the moment, but one person like Esther can make a difference for time and eternity. And you remember, Esther was the winner of the beauty contest. Uh, and so when all of the uh, young ladies in the kingdom were presented to the king, she was chosen to become the queen. But no one knew that she was a Jewess. And so uh, her identity, her past, was hidden from the king's court and those that were around her. Her relative Mordecai told her that God could use her. The phrase is, who knows but you've come to the kingdom for such a time as this, that he would allow her to be the one who protected her people, the Jewish, Jewish folks. And so Esther's role is important. She becomes the one who is willing to face sacrificing herself and her position as the queen so that God's moment uh, in her life uh, can just be on the horizon and eventually she will be the one who can stand up and protect her people. In all of this, you have God standing in the shadows, as it were, waiting for an opportunity to bless Esther and to use her for his glory. One of the key thoughts in this book is to trust the hidden resources of God's providence in your life. Sometimes we struggle and say, what is God up to? Why is he doing this? Who can explain this one to me? And we all have deep questions and struggles that we face. But there's an underlying principle that 
you and I can follow. And that is, when you can't see God's hand at work, trust that his heart is at work for you. You may not be able to say, I know why God did this, but you may be able to say beyond that, I know God loves me in the process that I'm walking through or in the situation with my friends or with those that are around me. Esther becomes the person who saves all of the Jewish people from death. And the king is ready to hang Mordecai on the gallows that Haman has prepared for him when the king discovers that Haman is the real evil person in the king, the kingdom. And during that time, the king is so angry that he turns out hanging Haman, the enemy of Mordecai, the Jewish man, and he dies on the gallows that, gallows that were intended for the Jewish person that Haman hated so much. Be careful who you hate. Be careful who you judge because God is at work in the background determining what's going to happen ultimately and in the end. There's a prayer that you and I might translate from the book of Esther. Lord, may I be sold out to your cause in life and may I be worthy to be used by you in a unique way. When trouble comes, help me to keep my eyes focused on you. I don't know how that fits into your life. It certainly fits into mine. I oftentimes want to run ahead of God and say, let's do it my way. And God is gracious when he says to me, Jim, Let's do it my way. And his way is always good. It's always right. So if there's a perplexing issue in your life as there was in the life of Esther, remember to trust God when you don't understand, to believe in God when all you can do is hold on, and to understand that God is always going to do the best for you if you allow him to. That's the principle. Let's repeat it again. When you can't see God's hand at work, trust his heart and it will be. God bless you.